Elliot, thank you for helping me become a king. A part of me just thinks going back to the days where men would farm, work, train during times of peace and be willing to fight and die for their God during times of war. You're being nostalgic, buddy. Uh, what is this feeling I have of wanting to simplify my life and go back to these ancient traditions? Bro, it's because life is so fake these days. This is one thing that I just keep saying to myself over and over again. And I got to remind myself, and I even kind of find myself complaining about a little bit, which is we live a fake fucking life. Everything is so fake, man. There's nothing worth living for, nothing worth dying for. It's all made up. It's all usurped, <laughs> right, by the Lord of this world. It's fugazi. We live in a matrix. And it's not to say that human life or life on earth needs to be that way, but we're living in a zoo, right? Like think about an animal, an animal that maybe previous generation lived in the wild where everything's real, but now he lives in a zoo. And what happens with an animal in a zoo? He gets accustomed to this fake world you guys accustomed to this fake environment but and at the same time something like something just eats at him on the inside he's like why some don't feel right <laughs> some don't seem right about this and that's where many of us end up now and i know this kind of maybe goes into your next question but i'm just gonna continue with that we got to be where we are because we are where we are for a good reason. Your life is not a mistake. You and I being here during this time, during this day and age, during these fake times, is not a mistake. So we can't be a fly boy like I spoke about last week. We can't be a fly boy and try to fly away in our imagination. I know, I know, because I do it myself sometimes. I'm like, man, I wasn't made for this world, but I was because I'm here and so are you. And I fly away in my imagination to, and then here's the other thing too about flying away in your imagination to previous times. It's all made up because we don't know how fucked up times things were back then, right? <laughs> like we have this fake pandemic because everything's fake right now. Back then they had like the Black Plague and shit like that. That was like real. I just listened to, uh, I was listening to a, uh, um, <clears throat> a YouTube video. This guy was talking about, he was talking the history of, some stuff, the history of the rosary. It was actually it. And he talked about the Black Plague and he was like, it wiped out one third of Europe. One third of the entire continent died. That's a real pandemic. 99.95% survival rate is not a pandemic. COVID is not a pandemic. One third of the population, right? That means 33%. That means the survival rate was like 77%, 77% survival rate versus a 99% survival rate. That's a pandemic. <laughs> Times were fucked up back then too. Yeah, Juan Pablo calls it the golden age fallacy, idealizing the past. Bro, I've been there. I've done that. It's easy to do, but we're idealizing shit that we know nothing about. And I get this whole sense that you want to die for a cause. And, and man, I'm there right, I'm right there with you. But we got to find that for ourselves in this world. And it comes, it comes in the form of suffering, sacrifice, persecution. And I believe in the court in these next 10 years, we're gonna see that. Maybe what you're hankering for is a sense of what's coming. I'm, list, I'm reading this one book. I listened to it on Audible. Really good book. It's called Live Not By Lies. Live Not By Lies. And it was basically about how uh, people live during, uh, like, when the Bolshevik Revolution happened in Russia, in, like, the, 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 uh, the, the, blood, the blood, bloody revolution in 1917 or whatever it was, 1913. Um, how these people who lived under persecution, specifically about Christians. I gotta find the book here for you guys so you can see it. It's a great book. Really, I, I found the book because I was listening to this guy. Somebody made a, an interview with him on YouTube. Live not by lies. And the guy, the, he tells stories of people living, you know, during, um, you know, the Marxist Leninist revolution 
um, in, in Russia and life was hard. But what he also explains is that because life was hard, because life was challenging, because they were persecuted, life was so much more colorful. Life had so much more meaning. Everything was heightened, right? When you, when you have this sense that you could die any day, which is true, you could die any day. But when it's knocking at your door because people around you are being thrown into the gulag, people are being killed every day. They're, when you're persecuted, when you're suffering, that's that life is lived a lot more lively. Life is a lot more lively when we're living that way. And I have a feeling we're going to be called, we're going to be called to, we're going to be called to fight back. We're going to be called to suffer persecutions. And maybe that's what you're sensing. Right, be willing to find uh, to fight and die for their God during times of war. It's cool. It sounds cool. Maybe it is cool. Men crave that, and maybe what you're sensing is what's actually on its way. It may very well be. And when you and when that time comes, if those times come, you can be wishing for these easy days. <laughs> you're gonna be thinking back. You're gonna be really have nostalgia about man remember back in 2020 when we had food <laughs> remember when we were complaining about how easy things were because we were living in a zoo but now there's bombs being blown up next to us never know when we're going to get the next meal never know when the gestapo is going to come knock on your door drag your wife and child away from you yeah you don't want that <laughs> you want it but you don't want it <laughs> i get it because it makes life more lively and you'll love life that much more it's very easy to hate this boring ass zoo uh conditioned life but you don't want that either but you know what happens hard times create strong men so maybe that's what we're craving we're craving to be strong men uh, Mark goes on to say, how do I see things? How do you see things going in the future? And how can we opt out of this joke of a society when we have kids and a family to support? You don't necessarily opt out. Here, Mark, this is important. And I think this is going to help you too. Suffer this life. Suffer the joke of society. Suffer this zoo. Suffer and sacrifice in the zoo because it, it, when you take that perspective of suffering, then it has a higher meaning, right? There's a higher meaning to it. It's like, yeah, I know that it's a joke and I know that it's eating me up on the inside, but I embrace my suffering. Embrace your suffering. Embrace your suffering. Offer it up as penance. Offer it up to God. Say, God, this is... I am suffering right now and I'm offering my suffering up to you. Thank you for my suffering. I'm reading this one book uh, called the, um, the diary of St. Uh, Faustina, St. Mary Faustina, something Faustina. And, um, and it's her diary. And I remember reading it. I was reading a little bit the other day and she's talking about how she begged for, she begged for suffering. She's like, she said, Christ, I want to suffer for you. Give me as much suffering as possible. And she got some suffering. She died young. She, she really suffered. She got sick. Um, you, you just living in a zoo. <laughs> you know the good thing about living in a zoo? Everything's handed to you. Everything's easy because you're living in a zoo. Your day is accounted for. Your food is accounted for. Your safety and security is accounted for until it's not. So suffer the zoo. Suffer the joke of a society. He says, things have unfolded perfectly so far, and I have a non-job. I'm working with Brandon Carter. I'm turning 38 next week. I don't watch the news, but sometimes I get an itch to feel something, so I check InfoWars, and it doesn't look good. Whatever happens... Uh, I guess we should get right with God and be ready to go at any time, right? I'll check for the answer. Yeah. So not only that, you're right, but take heed to my words. 
that suffering in silence is sanctifying. Suffer, suffer silently, bite that bullet, endure, right? That's another word. Be steadfast. Be ready because, you know, like you said, everything's unfolding perfectly so far for you and you have a, and you have a good life. Also be grateful. Be grateful. Um, I know where you're coming from, man, because I'm a warrior at heart. And if a warrior doesn't have a battle to fight, he starts making battles. You have no idea how many battles I fought with myself because I don't have a leg legitimate battle to fight outside. If, if warriors don't have a battle, we start picking fights. We start looking for shit to be upset about. We start looking for shit to fight about. And that because that's that's one form of the shadow warrior called the masochist. He just he just now he's a, a masochist and a sadist, a sadomasochist. He becomes a sadomasochist. He's just looking for punishment. He wants to punish people and he wants to punish himself because he does not have a directed. He doesn't have a direction for his aggression. And you don't want to do that because it's self-destruction. It's pure destruction. Be okay. They say it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. <laughs> right? Ever heard that? Be a warrior in the garden. Be a warrior in the garden. Stay sharp. Stay strong. Stay vigilant. Stay focused. But stay calm, stay relaxed, stay released from angst, anxiety, passionate drunkenness, right? Passionate drunkenness, this need for novelty, this need for excitement, this need for an adventure. And you're 28 now, too. You're getting, you're getting up there, bro. How old are you? Is it 28, you say? 38. 38. 28 is so actually a little young. 38. You're getting up there. Uh, it doesn't mean stop being a warrior. It means you become seasoned. You start becoming privy to your own warrior demons. You got to stop. You got to stop. It doesn't mean be weak. It means be wise. Be prudent. Right? And be ready to go at any time. Like you said, you know it. You know it because at any moment, you could be called to arms or you could be called to dust. At any moment, you could be called to fight or you could be called to die. That's the warrior vigilance. That's what it means to remain vigilant, meaning that any moment I can go or at any moment I might need to kill somebody. At any moment, I might be killed or I might need to kill. And be okay with that, but don't be hankering for it because then you're a masochist sadist. Masochist wants to kill himself because he can't handle the boredom. And a sadist just wants to create havoc, war. He wants to fight with everybody else. Be ready to die. Be ready to fight. But be calm. Be relaxed. Be in your garden. You see you have children? That's your garden. I wish you guys could see my board right now, but one of I wrote this about a year ago when I was little. I was trying to figure out where I where I am and what I'm doing. And I wrote to myself. I said, "I am a strong father in my garden." I don't know why I wrote that, but that's what came to me. I said, "I am a strong father." This word "father" just started like it was just embedded into my consciousness. It just kept showing itself to me. Um, this is way before I even started this program. But I added that part in my garden because I started to recognize that it's important that I stay in my garden. And what is what happens in a garden? This is the height of being a king. Cultivation happens in the garden. So the warrior wants to destroy, but there's growth in the garden. So you carry that ability to destroy, but you tend to your garden. Warrior in the garden. That's a There's no better way to say it, man. Be the warrior in your garden. I hope that helps, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know 
that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness business and with women and if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age it's real simple just follow me on instagram and then dm me the word king k-i-n-g and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.